In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Heart of Mary, St. Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the most sacred heart of Jesus. This, once again, a mystery reminding us of the incarnation of the Son of God, that the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. It might say it reminds us of the greater depths of the mystery that we celebrate at Christmas, that our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque and revealed to her his sacred heart that he said had been wounded by so many offenses of man, so many sins of man that have wounded his most sacred heart. And he was looking for St. Margaret and others like her to offer reparation to his most sacred heart. When we think about the incarnation and the sacred heart of Jesus, you know, only God could have thought about, you know, God becoming man, realizing that uh, God would take on a human nature and unite it to himself. When we look at the pagans and the Greek gods, they just kind of took human nature, fallen as it was, and divinized it, you might say. And so their gods had even you might say, bigger sins. They were just human na nature fallen, projected out in bigger uh, fashion. But they didn't have this idea that God somehow would come down and become man and to elevate man, to make man live in a higher way. And this is what our Lord and what God's plan was, it was not that... that uh, uh, that he would, he humbled himself, but he would, did so in order to make us, to raise us up. That mankind without God, without God's grace, and without the sacred heart of Jesus is not complete. We know that the first Adam, the first Adam in the Garden of Eden was created in grace, and he fell from that high state because of the original sin. So that man was incomplete without God's grace. And Jesus Christ uh, came to show us the way back to the Father and to show us that without God's grace, we cannot really, we can't do it on our own. And so when we look at this, this devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we see clearly the love of God manifested to us in a human fashion that God loved us so much he didn't want us to remain in that fallen state. And of course we know that it was always God's plan from the first moment that he, from all eternity, that he was to become man. So the Sacred Heart of Jesus was the pinnacle of all of what God wanted to do. He wanted to be, he wanted his son to become man so that all of creation could return the most fitting and do praise possible back to God the Father. And that could only be done if there was one who was, you might say, part of creation and yet also the creator. That this combination of true God and true man that we find in the sacred heart of Jesus united to the divinity of the second person in this great mystery of the God-man is truly <clears throat> something that, you know, we'll be able to ponder for all eternity, but shows us that we truly need God's grace and we need his help to be truly human. Without God's grace, we're not truly human. And we can see that as mankind right now, as his, seems the, the path that he is choosing is to go farther and farther away from the sacred heart, how less human, we truly are acting. We are becoming more and more uh, inhuman in our society because we are divorcing ourselves from the sacred heart of Jesus. When we recently, Pope, ben Pope Francis <clears throat> said that, you know, that uh, 
a Christian cannot be truly a Christian without the mediation of the church. And when we look at uh, the sacred heart of Jesus and how the church is his mystical body, we see that also, you know, all that the church manifests to the world is really the love of the heart of Christ. Even St. John Marie Vianney said that the priesthood was the love of, of the heart of Christ. The, the, um, the, all the sacraments are encounters with the sacred heart of Jesus. His love is being poured out through us as we know from his heart being pierced on Calvary the blood and water symbolize the sacraments, especially baptism and Holy Eucharist, but every sacrament of the church is in one way or another an, an encounter with the sacred heart of Jesus. His great love for us is being poured out through seven channels, you might say, constantly in his church. Every time we go to confession, every time we go to receive him in Holy Communion, especially we receive the heart of Christ in the sacred host, but confirmation, the matrimony, uh, priest or priesthood, and especially you know, the last rites, anointing of the sick, all these are encounters with the love of the heart of Christ for us. And so he has made himself very tangible for us. We can reach out and touch the heart of Christ by faith now through the sacraments. And of course, when we get to heaven, we will be able to do so face to face, heart to heart. And even now we can have this heart to heart encounter with Christ when we approach him through the church and through these ordinary means of grace, the sacraments. So today as we honor this sacred heart of Jesus, let us first and foremost thank him for this great mystery that he has revealed to us the plan that God has planned from all eternity to become man. And also, most especially since the sacred heart of Jesus has come to us and asked us to offer reparation to his most sacred heart on behalf of sinful humanity, to make reparation to his heart for all those who fail to love him and return that love uh, that he showed to us, especially on Calvary. Let us renew our efforts at doing so in offering reparation. We know tomorrow we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And the fitting, most fitting way that we could do to offer reparation is to, to further um, make our hearts like unto Our Lady's, to love him as Our Lady loved him. And we know that the heart of Our Lady was truly the sacred heart of Jesus. That is why these two hearts are so intimately united and why this mystery is celebrated back to back, the sacred heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Because of this great union that they have, we too want to unite our hearts to the heart of Christ more intimately and um, to do so with the intentions of repairing and returning love to, heart, to the heart of Christ. Let us ask Our Lady in a special way for this grace to become more sensitive and uh, conscious of offering reparation to the, to the most sacred heart of Jesus, that heart that has loved us to the max, to the, to the farthest that any heart could love us is the sacred heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.